Welcome everyone. This is uh, what we call speed to succeed. If you do a few things really well, you get where you want to go much more quickly. And that's what I call speed to succeed. And we, so our conversation uh, over the last uh, last week and this week is how do I get myself focused so so much that I'm able to get what I want much more quickly. Most people only set goals, they set uh, dreams, they have things they want to get accomplished and, and they float around inside our minds, um, uh, competing with all the other opportunities that are inside our brains for us to get, to get things done. And if, if there's just too much going on inside there, if we're not focused enough, then we get distracted in a million different directions. So the first conversation we had last week was how do you get clarity on what you really want? By asking those seven questions, what do I want? When do I want it? Where do I want it? Why do I want it? Who do I want it with? How do I get it? And, and, in, and in addition to that, the, the negative questions was there, what don't I want? When don't I want it? Where don't I want it? And if I'm really clear on what I want, what I don't want, then it, it seems to kind of form a, a, a pathway towards what I really want to get accomplished in my life. And if I, if I have this pathway, it's, it's like the exclamation point I can see amongst all the other question marks that are around me, that, that one exclamation point, which is what I want, becomes much more clear. It brings the exclamation point closer to me so that I see it, so that I, I, I see it to the exclusion of everything else. So that's what clarity is about. It's, and it gives you speed. Clarity is speed, period, end of story. Not clear, slow. You want to be, you want to, you want to think things slow? You want to slow down and not get anything done? Well, then don't know what you want. You know, uh, don't decide what you want. And that will, that will happen for you. So now let's, let's talk about how do we clarify that even more? So this is episode two of the Bob cast and episode two, where we're talking about uh, what I call map number two in the four maps of happy successful people. We're gonna use this as a backbone of our conversations, but I'm gonna go all over uh, and all over the map to bring some of these concepts into clarity. The, the map we talked about last week was the clarity map. And this is, this is what it looks like. It's simply drawing uh, a frowny face and a smiley face, deciding what, it, what, what causes that frowny face, why? Do you have a frowny face? What are the limiting beliefs that you have that hold you back? And then number two, what do I want? How do I get outside of this prison of my limiting beliefs and launch on the path upward to what I, toward what I really want? And uh, why do I want that? So if I can get clear on my why, then it will make my, my goal more, more attainable. Um, so the four maps, they look like, what do I really want? Number two, what could stop me or help me? And number three, how do I prepare? And number four, how do I get there? So map number two is what we call the anticipation map. And as you look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is how you draw it. So everybody take out a blank piece of paper and draw that lower left-hand frowny face. Draw it how you would like to see it drawn. That's the way... I simply drew it. I tried to draw it so simple that anybody could draw it. Then I didn't want to make it too complicated so that a person would say, well, I'm not an artist. So I can't draw that. So I wanted to make it take away all excuses. So you can draw a square, you can draw a circle inside it. You can draw two eyes, you can just two dots if you want. And you can draw a frown and that's, Pretty much this simply, that's where we get started. And today's date is the 17th of June, 2021. So you right, right below that frowny face, today's date, June 17, 2021. And if those of you who are watching this at a later date, whatever date you happen to be uh, on that particular day, that's the date you get it started. And in the future, five years in the future, you draw a smiley face. So simply draw a smiley face. And uh, what do you really want? You know, do you want money? That's the dollar sign. Do you want health? That's your body. Do you want love? 
that's the heart and you want free time that's your your clock in the top of part of it this is your ideal lifestyle so more clear you are about the ideal lifestyle you want the the more it will pull you if your dream is real if your dream is more real than your fears then the the dream will pull you towards it and so this is how you draw every map. It's very simple, like this. So let me ask you some questions about the excuses that, that you might have used in the past. From this day forward, there are no excuses. An excuse is, is, a, is a reason you give for why you didn't succeed. You can look back on your life and you can see all kinds of reasons why you didn't make it that that year or that time that uh, goal you set for yourself it did it didn't happen well why not well you'll give a reason you'll say well because be cause uh, you, you the, the the cause of the bee <laughs> the reason it happened it became or it did not become because and you give a reason for it and you empower that reason. You, you give power to the, and, and as soon as sometimes we give an excuse, we almost absolve ourselves and we say, eh, the, the, the obstacle was too big. There's no way I could have overcome that obstacle. And therefore I stayed on this side of, uh, of not becoming. So I didn't get what I wanted. Therefore I get to pay the price of not getting what I really wanted. I get to stay in my limited life with a frowny face. I don't wanna stay in the frowny face life. I wanna I want to go to the smiley face life. And so there's an obstacle that's gonna stand in the way. And it's every one of us is gonna give excuses. Um, tell me in the chat, let's be honest with each other. Uh, go back to a time when you didn't get what you wanted. Maybe it's a time when you still haven't gotten what you wanted. Last week, we talked about limiting beliefs. What would the limiting belief that would have slowed you down from getting it? But this week, I want to talk about the excuse. What excuse did you empower so that it stopped you from achieving what you really wanted? Um, I want you to put into the chat right now one of the excuses you have used in the past. I want it to be a real excuse, meaning it, you really believed it. You really decided that that was the reason, that was the cause. And therefore you use that as a way of explaining to yourself and to others why you didn't get what you wanted. So I want everybody, that means uh, we have 54 of us on this call right now. So I want 54 answers. What is the excuse you have used in the past for you personally? But I want you to make one up like, you know, I was afraid or whatever. I want a real excuse that you've really used. And so I'm looking in the chat right now. Let's see what we got. We have, uh, I was not worthy. Okay, good, good. Lack of money, didn't have any money. Froze approaching investors. So I guess it was some kind of a fear. Didn't, didn't have the time. Okay, good, keep it coming. I need 53 answers in here. So every single person's got to put an excuse in here. And if you say there was no excuse, then why don't you have what you wanted? <laughs> so in other words, obviously you may not know the excuse, but somehow or other at some level, there was an excuse. I was not confident, uh, fear of success. Not, I was not able, um, I was discriminated against. My body failed me so I couldn't get pregnant. That's a real one. Um, too many distractions, lack of money, not enough time, fear of success and confidence, will be denied if I ask, most likely won't be able to achieve it, not help from parents, too young, too old, fear of failure, laziness. I thought Einstein invented time to keep everything from happening at once. Thank you for that, Ken. Okay, uh, too overwhelmed with emergencies, okay. I'll drive people away. Uh, I have to learn a new skill. Um, these are all real excuses. And these excuses were used 
and and once you once you bought into it once you said well somehow or other you created that as a reality in your mind somehow or other you bought it you bought into it said this is this is what this is what must be true you assumed that it was true it's true that you don't have enough money therefore you can't succeed right it's true now it was a belief you had and as you heard me say many many times be the word lie is in the middle of a word of belief be lie and so these beliefs were not true so all beliefs not all beliefs are true there are some beliefs that are true that are absolutely absolutely true an absolute truth but most beliefs are lies. And so you bought into the lie and you, you, you gave it truth. You empowered that excuse with, a, with truth, with, with power, as if this is true. And therefore, since it's true, what do you do? Well, if it's true, I don't have to question it anymore. I, there's no more questioning. I don't have enough money. Well, duh, if I don't have enough money. I, of course I can't do what I said I wanted to do. So that excuse was empowered, became truth. You never, you no longer question it. There's, wh where did that, where did the thought get planted in your head that you don't have enough money, that that is true? Well, maybe it's somebody told you, maybe, maybe it's just you told yourself, maybe it was your critical voice that was speaking saying, you don't have enough money. You know, you can't do that. And you bought it. You say, oh, okay. Sometimes we buy it too quickly because really it's kind of scary to go out and do that stuff to achieve those kinds of things. So yeah, so we, we, we're easily accepting of lies that we empower to be truths because Really, we really, at some level, don't really want it that badly. So we'll buy the lie. We go, oh, okay. In every interaction, somebody's buying and somebody's selling. So if somebody's selling you the fact that you don't have enough money, you and you bought it. Might have been your critical voice was saying that. Might have been a friend speaking to you hearing their critical voice and their mind speaking it through their mouth to you and you, you bought it? You always have to ask yourself the question, is that true? Is that really true? Is that, is that true? These excuses, am I really too overwhelmed because of emergencies? Am I really? Uh, am I really that lazy? You know, do I, do I really have a fear of failure? Am I really too young? Is it true that because my parents didn't help me, I could not succeed? Is that true? Um, is it true that you won't most likely be able to achieve it? I'm just reading back through the excuses you've given me. Um, is it really true that you will be denied if you ask? It's true that most likely you'll be denied if you ask, but you know, and there are certain circumstances where you might not be denied, right? Is it really true that you have too many distractions, you lack money, you lack enough time? Is that really true? Because every excuse that you posted here on the chat, I can give you 10,000 examples of people who had the same excuse and decided not to believe it, decided whatever it took, Fear of failure, fear of lo loss, fear of laziness, whatever. I can give you a, maybe a million examples. I, I don't have a list of them, but I can say if we really went out into the world and looked through the 7 billion people, we would find a million people with a worse circumstance than you listed here who did it regardless of the excuse. Maybe because of the excuse. That would be powerful. Wouldn't it be empowering that when as soon as you heard that excuse, it empowered you to actually go, well, because 
some part of me doesn't believe it's possible, that other part of me that knows what's really true is going to prove it to that part of me that doesn't believe it's possible. The, the real, the true me, the real me, the eternal me is going to come out and prove it. Prove that whatever part of me didn't believe it and bought into it and thought it was true, that that was not true. That was a lie. And I'm going to prove it was a lie by my actions. So these excuses, they're all, they're, they're all very reasonable. They're reasonable. Success is not reasonable. Did you get that? Success is not reasonable. What's the probability that somebody would really achieve what they really, really want? It's, it's very, very small, 1%. 1% really get it all. Because it's unreasonable, it's unprobable. 99% of people will use an excuse and because it's reasonable. It's, it's, of course, I don't have enough money. What, what do you expect? I don't have any money. You just can't succeed at what you want. So it's... It's not reasonable, it's unreasonable. Yet where you wanna go is outside the, the reasonable circle and into the unreasonable circle where the odds are really small. And the risk is really real. The failure is really possible. And yet it's unreasonable. So. As soon as somebody gives you an excuse, it'll be reasonable. They'll reason with themselves. Say, That's the reason. That's the reason I really didn't get what I wanted. And th therefore, that part of my life that I really, I said I wanted, I said it, but I really didn't really mean it. I didn't mean it. I just was looking for the first excuse that I could hang my hat on. Some of you, if you, you listen to all these excuses, uh, in the chat here, you'll you'll probably recognize some of them that you've used yourself. It wasn't the primary one you wrote down here, but you probably, well, yeah, I've used that one before, and I've used that one before. Yeah, I've used that one before. What did it cost you to have that excuse? Lies, especially lies to yourself, are really expensive. Extremely expensive. And it's just a thought like we said last week. So this, oops, hold on a second. Oops, I'm sharing the wrong one, here we go. So the first excuse that people give and many of you gave in the, the chat is I'm, I'm just too busy. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I've just got so much stuff that's going on. You know, it's just no way that I could really accomplish that, you know. So I'm just too busy. And you'll hear uh, a thousand people tell you that in your lifetime. I'm, I'm too busy to get that done. And so the question is, are they too busy or are, 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 are they too busy? Meaning the, you got too many things on your plate. You got to take 80% of the things off of your plate. So you are not too busy. You know, you're only, you're only gonna put two or three things on your plate and you will not allow anything else on your plate except those two or three things. So that you basically decide that that's just it. That's, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna force myself to not be too busy. I'm going to, there's this, this, um, by the way, just draw that whirlwind, the whirlwind of life. You draw that on the, the blank page that you're drawing, the frowny face. And that's the way of describing overwhelm and being too busy, the whirlwind of life. There's just so much stuff to do. Most of the stuff is the 80% stuff. That means 80% of the things give you 20% of your results. And 20% and of the things give you 80% of your results. Therefore, you have to make a decision. Is this an 80 or a 20? As you're doing your to-do list every day, have a, have at the top of the, of the to-do list is that what I call the 20. And the bottom part of the to-do list is the 80. And therefore, you're going to decide before you write anything down, is this a 20 or an 80? 
If it's a 20, that means this is going to give me 80% of my results. When do I need to do this? I need to do this now. I need to do this now fast. I've got to get this done. It may take weeks to get that thing done, but it's at the top of my list and I'll work on it every day. The things that are on the bottom, the, the 80, those are the 20% or the 80% that gives you 20% of your results, which means it's, it's, it's inconsequential. If you don't get it done, the, the world's not, 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 not going to end. You know, my wife complains from time to time about this or that. And what I say, <laughs> this is my way of saying it, that we have our own little vocabulary. Do you have your vocabulary with your significant other? And, and, and I'll, I'll basically say, it's not cancer. You know, in other words, it's not something we should worry about. It's not something that we should spend any, any amount of our stomach lining ulcerizing over it is just it's not cancer it's not it's not it's not it's not a 20. If it's a 20 if life if it's life threatening yeah let's do that and do that now but if it's it's an 80 i can procrastinate that can't i i'll procrastinate those things i'll do them later the things that are the 20 i'm going to do those things now so as I said last week, the most successful person in the world is the best procrastinator because they put so many things off and they only do a few things, but they do those things extremely well, extraordinarily well, insanely well. Like I've been listening to a podcast about Johnny Ive, the, the designer of the iPod, the iPhone and the iPad and, uh, and the, 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 all the, a lot of the main uh, iconic products of, of Apple. In fact, I got his book today. I mean, there, there's his book right there. Just just came on the doorstep just before. And uh, I want to I learn the stories. Like, hey, what were the reasons that made these, these products so iconic? And when Steve Jobs came back in 1997 to Apple, he'd been kicked out nine years earlier. They threw him out because he was an asshole. Excuse the language, but that's what they called him. And they threw him out. When he came back, um, Johnny was there. Johnny was the, the designer was there and Steve, said, guess what, we're gonna, we're gonna, he drew a quad, four things, and he said, we're gonna do four products, period. We're gonna cancel everything else. We're gonna literally stop all these other projects that we spent millions of dollars developing, they're gone, they're in the garbage heap. We're only gonna do four things. We're gonna do uh, personal computers and we're gonna do uh, mainframe computers, not mainframe, but you know, uh, office computers. And um, that's it. There's, there's, there, were, there were four. I can't remember what the four were, but there were four. And um, that means they had to start from scratch designing insanely great products. And so it's, it's just that same example for your life. You've got to go, what do, I want to, what do I want insanely great in my life? So that means I'm going to invest 80% of my time in those 20% of those items. And I'll invest 20% of my time in that 80% of everything else. I'll procrastinate the 80% in, into the 20% of the time I'm going to push off till later. And then I'm going to take that 80% of that time and I'm going to focus on just a handful of things. I'm going to make those insanely great. I'm going to make myself insanely great. You decide you're the product, you're it. This is your life. Therefore, you are Apple. You're, you're the product, you're it. You're going to make yourself insanely great, right? You're going to make yourself better. You're going to improve yourself constantly, little by little by little by little, till eventually you become who you've always been. The, the strengths you've always had. You've always had them. You just had to discover them. You've always, you've always had this DNA. The DNA is in there. The blueprint and the DNA is, is in you right now. In fact, the blueprint to create you and the way you think and the brain and everything else about you is the tiny DNA blueprint is in every single cell of your body of trillions of cells in your body. The blueprint is in every one of them. And in, in that blueprint, you, you're, you're it. You get to now evolve into the greatness that you've always wanted to have for yourself to make yourself insanely great. So that's why you've invested time to be here you're willing to, to give up your lunchtime or whatever you're giving up to be here today, you know, it's because you've decided that you're worth it. So somebody who wrote in here as one of the excuses, I, I, you know, I didn't think I was worth it. You're proving right now 
this very second that you're worth it because you're willing to invest and sacrifice and give away time you could spend on something else to be here to hopefully make, to, to discover one or two ideas of all the blather that I throw at you. One or two ideas are gonna aha into you and you're gonna go, oh, 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 I got it. I, and then you get it. Now you gotta hang on to it. You gotta hang on to that aha you get. You gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta infuse it into life the thought you're having today, can I make it real? Can I bring it into my life? Can I use that against the excuses I've been giving myself for so long? So, you know, don't use that as an excuse. Nobody is too busy because they get to decide what they do. You get to decide that you're given freedom to decide every day, to decide using to cut or to kill everything else and only keep a few things. So I don't want you ever, and I, I, never out of your mouth or in your mind, should you ever say, I'm too busy because you're in control of everything. And uh, you've decided to be too busy. You've decided to put too many things on your plate. It was your decision right from the very beginning. So you have to decide to get it off your plate, Just get it off there, right? And I know we all feel like we're overwhelmed, but Sorry, you're the one who gets to decide. All those little pieces of paper, you can throw them, almost all of them away and get two or three pieces of paper. And put those three pieces of paper in front of you and clarity, you know? So the second excuse people give is that they don't know what to do. They, they're going through a learning curve. And the question they give is, I'm not willing to take action until I know enough. And so everybody uses that as an excuse. Yeah, I don't know enough yet. When will you ever know enough? Those of you who hung around me for a long time, you know, I've, I've taught over and over again what I call the paradox of knowledge. That means that as soon as you start to learn something, the circumference of what you're learning starts to increase. And inside the circle of what you're learning, as you learn a new fact, a new thought, your circle ex expands. And if you learn new things, a brand new thing, your first of your, your brain is a, is a pea brain. It's just a little tiny amount of information about that one thing you wanna learn. And, and then um, this pea brain, if you learn something new, it expands the circle of the stuff you know until eventually it gets bigger. But the, as you expand the circle of the stuff you know about that subject, you also expand the circumference that now comes in contact with the things you don't know. In other words, the more you know, the less you know. The more you know, the more ignorant you, you become. Why? Because you go, oh, I didn't know that. When you're a teenager, you thought you know it all, didn't you? You thought your parents were idiots. And then, then you became a parent and you go, oh, I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> And I realize I don't know it all and I'll never know it all. I'm a, like Socrates, you're always asking questions, right? Uh, I heard a quote just yesterday, last night on a podcast I was on. This was uh, Goethe. We were, been, oh, we didn't do our commitment statement. Oh, that's, that's, that's in the next call. But Goethe um, said, doubt, this is a powerful quote, doubt, grows with knowledge. What? I thought the more I knew, the less doubt I would have. No, doubt grows with knowledge. It means the more you know, the more doubts you have because you realize, well, I, I can't, how can I know it all? Is it, you know, do I know enough? Because if I don't know enough, then I'll fail. And then they're, you know, and the question, I usually take about, an hour to, go to unpack this one thought. But the, the thought really is you'll, you'll not know enough ever. You'll never know enough. The only way you really know is you're, if you're willing to take action, knowing you don't know enough. What? You mean I'm gonna take action knowing that I might make a mistake, that I, that I don't know it all, that I can't make it all 100% certain? No, you're going to, act in the middle of the possibility of not knowing and making a mistake because you're not knowing it and yet you want it so badly 
you're willing to act even though you don't know enough. Even, even though you, you, you could make a mistake, that's how badly you want it. So this excuse that people give, I'm not willing to take action until I know enough or I don't know enough or uh, I'm not smart enough yet. Well, you'll never be smart enough, um, never. Not, well, not in, not in this lifetime. And might take a couple of million years in the next lifetime to kind of figure out that one. But the point I'm trying to make is in this lifetime, we got to act. And we cannot let this excuse hold us back. Just can't stop it. We all start out with high expectations and then we realize, uh-oh, this is going to be harder than I thought. And therefore, we go through this learning curve. And right in the middle of this learning curve, people quit because they don't know enough. And they realize it's going to be hard to learn enough, to practice enough, so that I get good enough to not make too many mistakes that will make me look like a fool in front of other people. Therefore, I'd rather look like a fool to myself and just not do anything and have 100% failure. Because not acting is 100% failure. If I acted, I might have a 1% chance of success. But if I don't act, I'm a miserable failure. Because I not only don't have what I want, but I have what I don't want. And that's, that's not a life we want to be at. You know? And so eventually we go through the learning curve and then we get the light at the end of the tunnel. But you know, it's really because in the middle of this, we're just afraid of take, taking action. We're using the excuse we don't know enough, and that's just a lie. That's not true. You know enough to take action. Yeah, but I might fail. Yeah, yeah, you might. What? Number three is the marshmallow. And you draw, I want you to draw all these things, literally. Draw the frowny face and put in the whirlwind. Draw the learning curve. This is what I got to go through, and I've got to learn how to take action, even though I don't know enough. But I'm learning to know enough, but I got to act my way through it. I got to act my way through the learning curve, not think my way through the learning curve. I have to practice my way through the learning curve. And the little marshmallow represents um, the, the uh, research that was done by Michel in this early 60s about kids uh, being given an opportunity to choose to have a, a marshmallow and eat it now or to get two marshmallows when the researcher comes back. You've heard this uh, research um, many, many times, I'm sure. Um, the question is, you, you too are a little child sitting at the table with a marshmallow in front of you. And you get to decide to gobble up that marshmallow. Usually the marshmallow is time. Gobble up the marshmallow or Restrain yourself and have the willpower enough to put off, distract yourself enough so that you don't eat the marshmallow now and get two marshmallows later, you know? And so the problem is we, 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 we have too many opportunities and we have too many marshmallows around us. And it takes enormous willpower not to pursue a marshmallow. Because even on our cell phones, every single day we have these these marshmallows that that are uh, appear all around us, and we get to decide, and we have to decide quickly: yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, twenty percent, eighty percent, yes, no, yes, no. And today you're going to make at least a thousand uh, decisions, a thousand today, maybe more. Um, one expert estimated there are a thousand decisions you make every day. What percentage of those decisions are consequential to your life? Consequential. It might be 10, like 1%. Well, well let's see, 10% would be out of a thousand, 10% would be a hundred. So 1% would be 10. 10 decisions you're gonna to make today are consequential. Meaning if I do that, if I decide that and do it, it will actually take me to what I have always dreamed of accomplishing. And if I don't, if I don't take that consequential, make that consequential decision and, and follow through on that consequential action, 
then I'm going to choose something else and I'm going to have 990 other choices and they're going to be inconsequential. They won't, it's not cancer. It's not, it's not, it's not what you want. It's just like, it's a little distraction. It doesn't take you where you want. It's the real question, the real simple question is every decision you make is, does this take me to where I want? Yes or no? If it's no, don't do it. Does this take me to where I want? To what I, what I really want? Does this take me there? No, no. Got to be, got to be saying no all the time. No, 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 no. Lots of marshmallows you got to say no to, and you got so many opportunities. As you know, when we have too many opportunities, according to the book, the paradox, paradox of something, the paradox. I maybe called the paradox that if you give too many jams that a person can choose at the grocery store, you put sixteen jams out. You let, uh, let them choose, taste all the jams and take the sales that happen uh, you, that from the sales that happened that day from all the jams. You got 16 kind of jams out there. You get to taste them on the little crackers, you know, taste them all if you want to. And then get to decide what one you want to buy and then spend money on it that day. And then the next day they do the exact same test. It's just instead of 16, there are three. Which of these three jams would you like? Do you taste all three? And guess which sales exceed from the 16 jams or the three jams? You know, the sales of the three jams vastly greater than the choices of the 16 jams. So what I'm trying to say is um, you've got 16 jams all around you right now. Um, he said, it was 10 15 and joey told me it was being and you have to decide don't you i can get there in you 10, have to decide is that, am, is am i going to say no okay, to these other parents when they're you. all right in front of me you know and they're they're in front of you they're 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 stopping you hold on a second i'm trying to mute everybody here a little bit of noise in the background let me mute everybody so you have to decide, you know, in the first case, the grocery store decided to put the 16 jams on and you out and you had to decide from those 16 choices, which one you would buy. And because there were so many choices, you didn't buy any. So we live in a world like that where the grocery store is all around us and we got a million jams <laughs> They're all around us and we have to decide if it's not strawberry, sorry, I'm not even gonna look. If it's not grape, no, nope, not gonna look. If it's not, if it's, if it's not blueberry, if it's not one, of, if it's not one of those three things, no, 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 not apricot, not not apricot, no, nope, not gonna look at that. Not peach, no, nope, no, nope, no, it's blueberry, strawberry, and grape. That's it. You have to make the decision. Therefore, it reduces the opportunity for you to spend time on things that don't matter, right? So the, uh, this is the, the book. If you ever wanna read a great book, this is The Marshmallow Test by Walter Mischel, Mastering Self-Control. If you ever had any issues with self-control, great book. Because this explains his research of what I just explained to you with the kids sitting in front of the, the deciding whether they wanted to eat the marshmallow or not. And uh, they went through all kinds of machinations. The ones who win, one third of the kids, one third, we're able to avoid uh, to procrastinate long enough to get to two marshmallows. Two thirds couldn't, couldn't hold themselves back for 10 minutes. And then they followed the research of these kids over decades and found out that the two thirds who didn't have the willpower to avoid a simple marshmallow, didn't have the willpower to have better relationships, didn't have the willpower to avoid any kind of drug addiction, didn't have the willpower to make more money, didn't have the willpower to have a better life. The one third who just seemed to have the ability to will themselves to procrastinate, they got it. So this is, uh, this is the willpower. He's the most important personal power. So wh wh that, that's what that marshmallow is about. The, the, the next part of the anticipation map is anticipating the fact you're going to have some fear you're going to have to climb some cliffs. Cliffs are dangerous and they're scary. And that's what that, those four lines represent, the cliff in your life. Some people don't have cliffs. They're not afraid of much. Some people are, their cliffs are huge. They're, 
a thousand feet high. Uh, I don't know what you, where you are when it comes to fear, but excuse number four, it's an easy way of describing it. It's outside my comfort zone. It's just a euphemistic way of saying I'm scared out of my mind. And I don't, I don't dare leave my comfort zone. If you don't dare leave your comfort zone, then you get what comfort zones give you. They give you the 99% of what everybody else has, which is not very much. And the 1% or 2% or whatever the number is, 5%, who really get it, get it all. The unreasonable people, you know, they go outside their comfort zone a lot. And they, they feel comfortable out there in the uncomfort zone, right? So why do you procrastinate? Yeah, I'll bet most of you would say that you're pretty good procrastinators. And I would say you're, you're bad procrastinators. You're not good procrastinators. A bad procrastinator does the 80% first and procrastinates the 20% till you get it right, you know? Till you know enough. Till you're not busy till you got enough money, right? But the, the ones that, that get it, the, that minor, the 1% that get it, they procrastinate the less important things and do the most important things first. And they get it done, right? So last week we talked about the fears that would hold you back. I call up them the, the limiting beliefs. Uh, we talked about the fears, the fear of failure, the fear of embarrassment, the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, the fear of success, the five biggies, or whatever limiting belief you gave yourself, or whatever excuse, you could put excuses in there, by the way. This time, you could just go back and redraw this same map you drew last week and just go, this is the excuse I used. Don't have enough money, don't have enough time, don't have enough knowledge, don't have enough self-esteem, whatever it is and you just draw the same chart we did last week with what you call limiting beliefs and just exchange it with the word excuses because you either have results or you have excuses, but you can't have both because excuses mean lead to no, no results and no excuses means results. So um, I've shown this photo to some of you before. Here's my son and I looking at a cliff that my father brought me to when I was like 14 years old. Uh, my son Aaron there is, is probably in his 20s, but I took him to the same cliff my dad took me to. That cliff there above that, above that waterfall is a, is a beautiful lake. And uh, I, I, th I hope you can, yeah, you can see it. And those lakes up there are filled with fish that are big and hungry. And the reason they're so big and hungry is that nobody dares climb that cliff. My father went in there with the guy who discovered the trail where the, um, where the goats, he saw the goats one day crossing this cliff. He was, he was a hiker. He loved to climb in the Waterton Parks National Park, Waterton International, Water Glacier, Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. And this is Waterton where I grew up as a young boy and came to these parks hundreds of times with my dad fishing creating those memories that only dads and fishing can create. And I was fishing with my son and taking him to the same spot my dad brought me to. And I did the same thing my dad did to me. My dad said, Bobby, the lakes above that cliff are incredible. I've only been in there one time. I'll never go again. It was the best fishing of my lifetime. I will never go again. Just wanted to let you know. And we walked back down the trail back to the car and got in the car, went to a lake where, the, where it was an easy climb, where was a lake where lots of fishermen could go, where the fish were less plentiful and smaller. And that's where we would fish. Sometimes we'd climb five miles up, sometimes 10 miles up, you know, to very clear Crypt Lake and Alderson Lake. And there are, well, there are so many lakes in Waterton. And so that's what I would do with my boys. But uh, this day, my son hasn't yet gone into the cliffs into Lynham Lakes. He hasn't gone there yet. But I said to myself, if my dad can go in there, I'm going to go in there. So I brought Aaron to this same spot. We looked at the cliffs. Can you see a way up there, up that cliff? Can you see a path? Can you see any way where anybody could get across that cliff? Well, if you look really closely, you'll see that right there. Can, can you see my cursor? Can you see my cursor? Julie, can you see it? Right there, there is a little trail. Can you see it? That's the trail that Mr. Goble 
saw the, the, the goats crossing one day and he followed them. It was tricky and it was dangerous. And he made it up into there and he would start taking his family in. And so, you know, there's, the, there, there's my son sitting at the base of the cliff and up there is where, you know, it's, it's, it's scary. You know, it's, that's the cliff and that's what you have to climb to get into. And when I was in my early thirties, I you bought a cabin. You are overheating my phone, asshole. <clears throat> we can hear you, everybody. <laughs> so, so the bottom line is uh, I, when I was in my early thirties, I went there with the son of the man who took my father in. And uh, we went in, I won't spend too much time talking about the, the story, but the bottom line is we went in and uh, I fished and had the most incredible fishing of my lifetime and um, caught the greatest amount of fish I've ever caught. Biggest fish, fastest fish, easiest fishing. And when I came back down the cliff, it was terrifying. And the dog that was with us, the family's dog that had been across that cliff many times, fell off the cliff with right in front of me. This nimble, lifetime dog of, this, of the Goebel family fell and died in front of me. You talk about me being petrified to go across that cliff. I still, I was at the beginning of the cliff to go back and I had to go across and I had to focus all of my attention on my feet. I look at my two feet and, and I move six inches and I said to myself, I can do that. And another six inches, I can do that. Another six inches, I can do that. Till eventually, little by little, six inches at a time, we made it across, found the dog, carried him all the way back and buried him. What I'm trying to say by that quick story is that some things are just terrifying and then they, they scare the heck out of you. And I know exactly what that's like. And what I want you to do is to not give the excuse of fear. Fear is too expensive. You, you get a guide. If, if, you don't, if you can't go across the cliff yourself, get a guide. I did, my dad did. Get a guide. Find somebody who's been there, take you across. May cost you fortunes to get that guide. Um, you, you, you essentially, as part of the inner circle, I'm your guide. So you've already invested the time and the, and the money to be here, but you want a one-on-one -on -one guide to take you across that cliff as I, as I did. Uh, you get to fish in the best lakes. You get to find the best opportunities because they are always hidden behind the cliffs. All the greatest opportunities are where nobody dares go. Up above that is, is, the, is the, not the comfort zone. Down below that, the bottom of the cliff is the comfort zone. So you get to choose which one you want, right? The excuse number five is disaster happens. So what's new? You have a sudden storm in your life and you can use that as an excuse. I can find you a million people with equally devastating sudden storms in their lives and they didn't use it as an excuse. They didn't, but they didn't buy into it. They said, I want this and I'm gonna get this, regardless of the disaster. Um, you know, I was just thinking today, you know, philosophically, you know, if you're higher power designing an earth and you want your earth to be a place where you learn the most in the shortest amount of time, what kind of earth would you create? Well, look at it. You would create an earth, would, would you, would the, would, the, would the enemy be weak or strong? Those of you from a Christian perspective, you know, there is a darker force too. And there's the higher force, the spirit. And uh, those of you are Christian Jesus. Well, there's darker forces too. Would you want the darker force to be weak? If you're designing an earth where you get to prove yourself, you want, your, you want the dark force to be weak? No, the dark force is going to be strong. It's going to be, if you get to design the game you want to play in, like in a sport, yeah, you want to play tennis? You want your, you want your opponent to be weak? You want them to be a three-year-old child? Is that what you really want? You want a tough opponent. And that's what life is all about. 
You want the consequences to be inconsequential of, from life. Or do you want the consequences to be consequential? Which means these consequences are going to be painful. These consequences are going to be devastating. When you make the wrong choices, the consequences are going to hurt. And, if, and those of us here on life, we realize that, you know, you're a breath away. You're a breath away from dying right now, this very second. And if you put your head under the water for two or three minutes, the consequence is done. It's You're done. And so the consequences of living on this planet at this time are consequential. And the opponent is the most powerful opponent. And we have to make it through this life. Because when we make it through and we're able to hang on to the iron rod and hang on to the things we know that are true, where anybody might, the mists of darkness might come and try to pull us away, but we hang on to that iron rod because we know what is true for us and we hang on to it and we don't get distracted and we don't let any opponent, strong as that opponent might be, pull us off the iron rod. And when this life is done, we can say, we can report back and we can say, it was hard, but I did it. I don't know why you could have designed a life so tough, so hard with the opponents, so unbelievably powerful. And yet, wow, I did it. And the same kind of thing that I'm taking the internal perspective here. Now we're trying to break it down into five year duns, you know, one year, in one day must, the things you gotta to do to get your little tiny goals done in the next 90 days. The little tiny things you say you wanna do are just really, they're not that big, frankly. If you're afraid to do that little thing you said you wanted to do, then the big things of life. See what we're doing in these 90 days challenges that, that for the inner circle that we're gonna meet at here shortly is because we're try, trying to prove that if that we can do little 90 day things and we're not going to let life distract us from it, right? Okay, so let me finish up here from our conversation. The, um, the, we, we don't want it easy. We want it tough. And we want to say we did it. We, we survived it. We, we, we would hope it was easier. We realize that it's not going to be easy. It's going to be the hardest thing we'll ever do to breathe a breath on this planet. It's the hardest thing we'll ever do. And, but we're here, we're in, we're in the game and we're all in, we're, we're all in. So the, the disasters are gonna happen and we just gotta go, you know, big deal. You know, my beautiful mountain cabin destroyed by a mountain avalanche that was our, we were in our dream home in our early thirties and it was destroyed and I had to start all over again. If I look back now on this disaster that happened that day and the 10 years it took me to dig out what, who I became because of this disaster, I would not give away or give up this disaster for all the money in the world because this disaster defined me. Thank you for that avalanche. Uh, it's, 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 it's easy to say after the fact, after you've survived it, it's extremely hard to do before the fact. That's why they send us down to this planet and before the fact, we, maybe we probably were informed of how tough it was going to be. But then we get here, we find out, oh, I didn't realize it was this tough, right? And so we, we did get to decide what we want to make of the disasters. Are we going to make the disasters part of the reason that we succeed or part of the excuse for us not to succeed? Is this, was this, could have, I could have said, I could have said, yeah, I, I got wiped out. I got bankrupted. So I want to teach French. It's what I graduated in school. <laughs> my MBA or my, my MA or my BA was a French, French. Yeah, I'll go be a French teacher. Or I said, I wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to be financially free. I wanted to pursue my dreams. I said that, therefore I cannot use this avalanche as an excuse. It actually has to be rocket fuel for me. 
It cannot be a dousing water on the flame of my little, my little flickering flame of my dream. It has to be rocket fuel. I don't want to put water on it. I want to put gasoline on it. I want to make that the gasoline. And it's, it's, it's easy to say this now. It's very difficult to, 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 to foresee it and to be ready for it because you just can't be ready for it until you've actually gone through it. But those are the those are the reasons why I am who I am today. So these challenges and these champions that are there to help support us, uh, we have to learn how to trust that we'll figure out a way. This is the bottom line. This is the belief you need to have. I'll figure out a way. If there's an excuse that comes up, an obstacle that stops me. I'll figure out a way. I need to trust in myself. I'll figure out a way and prepare in advance for whatever obstacle or excuse gets thrown at me and figure out a way around it, over it, under it, whatever it takes, right? So in your lifetime, this is your lifetime. You started off at zero and you, depending on where we go in life, you're gonna go to eternity or infinity. So did you start at zero or did you exist before you started at zero? Is, did you exist? Did you think like you think? That's a very spiritual question, which I won't go into detail here today. But the bottom line is my personal belief is yes. That's why it's dotted that way to the left. But the point is we are given this lifetime where, where as a scientist, we get to know this is what we get to experience during this lifetime. And uh, after this lifetime, we, have to, we get to debrief what we learned while we're here and today is uh, the 17th of june it's today and uh, five years earlier whatever we believed is the fruit that we are picking today as i said last week whatever belief you planted five years ago you are reaping the fruit of it today so you got to be careful what kind of trees you plant because when you plant those trees they're going to grow into grow into fruit five years from now and um you have to make the decision, what tree do I want to plant? What, what, what seeds do I want to plant? I want to plant the positive seed. I want to plant my dreams. I want to make those dreams more real than my fears. You know, so that's just what we get to do. And we get to have a life that has ups and downs in it that are, you know, filled with disaster, filled. And we get to decide what those disasters mean. You know, my mother died the day I was born. I get to decide that I was, a, that I was an orphan, that my mother, was no longer here to help and support me or i get to believe she is there to support me just not something i can see right now but behind the scenes oh she knows that bobby is doing the best he can do and so the disasters that happen in your life <clears throat> they are they are meant to build you to grow you you get to decide what they mean. They either mean you're a failure, or they mean you, they, they, or they mean the excuses you've given for them. You decide whatever ch ch challenges you've come up with that, that you're not up to the task. If that's a belief you have, then then you you take that away from those bad experiences. Or, you know, you you I, that's why I call those zones the darn failure zones, where you. You learn from those failures and those disasters in your life that you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you're not, you're not knowledgeable enough, you're not, you just can't do it. Or you come through them and learn the wisdom from them, take away not the bad memory, but take away the wisdom that comes and turn, the trans, turn that darn failure zone into a dynamic future zone. And you get to decide which is which whatever has happened whatever excuse you use up to this point is it a darn failure experience excuse or is it a darn as a dynamic future uh, a re, uh, you know, truth is it the is it the lie of the dynamic or the <laughs> gonna get these words right is it a lie that these excuses were the darn failure zones or is it the truth that your future is dynamic if you learn from it and gain wisdom from it and march forward the next step, even if it's six inches, if you just take six inches, you can get across this, lit, this cliff called life. Six inches at a time, you can make it. And then during this 90 day challenge that 
many of us are part of, you can decide to take it six inches a day. But I got to take, I got to make six inches. And uh, we find ourselves here past our hour. The bottom line of our conversation today is anticipating what are you going to do when, the, when these five challenges come into your life? Are you going to be a hero or a zero? Because there really isn't much difference, much, much choice. You know, it's like uh, if I'm a zero, that means I get nothing done. That means I allowed these challenges, these excuses to define me as a zero and I do nothing. That's what I mean by zero. Or I decide to define whatever, ex whatever excuse I might think I decide to make it into gasoline for my dreams. And I decide to be a hero because to be a hero in the next 90 days is tough. You have to say no to so many things. To be a hero in life, just to just to, just to take a breath on this planet with COVID-19 all around us and every disaster you can possibly think of and the millions of people have died from this crazy little however it got started virus and uh, just to be alive. You know, we, we've come through it now. Doesn't it feel good to be alive? You're a hero. So the, that's our thoughts for today in what I call the Bobcast. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would give me a gift. Go into the chat. Tell me what you want to take away. What's an aha you got as a result of our conversation today that has been valuable enough for you, for you to codify it into words so that you can put those words into your chat so I get to read them and everybody else gets to read them of what you took away. And maybe it'll be things that that, that I said today that I may have said for the very first time and may never say again. So it would be a great gift to me if you could put in the chat the sentence or the thought that you ahad during the last hour so that I get to get to learn from you, okay? So everybody go into the chat, you know, just everyone, I'd, like, I'd really be honored if every single one of you would uh, share with me one aha. That, that I can take away from your takeaway, okay? So go into the chat. If everybody would, let's see, here we go. Okay, good. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Inner circle, yeah. You always know enough to start. Yes, you do. Thank you. Please excuse unstable. <laughs> that wasn't an awe. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you, thank you. Six inches at a time in a lifetime. Takes you a long ways, yep. Yeah, thank you. The consequences have to be consequential. That's the first time I've ever said that. And as I said it, I thought, that's interesting. I wonder if that'll resonate with anybody besides me. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. What excuse, what excuse did you empower? More procrastination? <laughs> Quit making excuses and just do it. Good. Lies to yourself are really expensive. No more excuses. I am the insanely great product. That's right, because the DNA you got in you, genius. Turning excuses into boosters, power. Okay, thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, our, uh, for those of you who joined with us on the Inner Circle call, that will happen at the same link uh, in a few, uh, in 45 minutes or so. I wish all of you well. You're more than welcome. We can stay just a little, a little longer if you'd like. You want to come out verbally and say what your aha is. You can unmute yourself and and tell it to me um, or or not. You're welcome to say goodbye and go. go and, yeah, or you can, can come out live and verbalize it. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when, when, you said, when you said about, would you want the challenge in your life or the bad guy in your life to be easy? 
it really got me thinking because always in the past I've always thought yes like why why are the challenges in life so hard and it's like you know I I just want to just live in that kind of land of rainbows and unicorns and fairies and to not yeah. really have yeah, any yeah. problems but when you actually mentioned it and you were like no you wouldn't it it did really get me thinking because it's and you, when you said it because you said it as well you said if you designed you know this game of life would you make the bad guy easy and I was like, yes, yes, I would. But then the more you were talking, it's like, actually, would I? And it's just like, I've never really thought about it like that. I've always thought about it as the, yeah, why is it so hard? Like, why can't it just be easy? No bad guys, no challenges, um, or, or, you know, or little ones. But then it's like, ah, oh, because it's it, even like games, like, um, I don't really, I'm not really a gamer per se, but like, you know, like certain um, like strategy games or whatever. And it's like, um, when they are too simple, you, you get bored of it. It's like, you kind of want a, a challenge in that respect. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of weird that like in situations like that, you'd be like, well, yeah, you kind of need the challenge, but in life you kind of like, no, I don't want the challenge. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's just a different way of looking at it, but that really got me thinking. Um, so yeah. yeah. That, that thought I had jazz just for the first time in my life, just a couple hours before I came in here. And I thought, hmm, that's an interesting question. Would I want a weak opponent? And I never thought I would ever say it today, but it just kind of came out. So thank you, Jazz, for catching that one. Anybody else would like to verbalize an aha for me? Come on, say it. Bob, I would. Uh, this is Julie. Hi, As Julie. you were talking a couple of times, I was reminded of something that I say to myself and I say to my clients, and that is I want to design my, I want to live my life by design and not default. Yeah. And that came about as computers were getting more and more popular because so many people would just take the default choice of a computer program or of apps or whatever they might be introduced to. And yet that would only give them so much life to live. And so if you live your life by design, that means you have some control and you also need to procrastinate some of the other things that might be thrown at you. Um, so I was thinking of that. And, you know, as I've gone through a recent health challenge, the question I'm also asking myself, since I feel it is a very worthy opponent, not yeah. quite the bad guy, but a worthy opponent, is where is the blessing in this? How can I look upon this situation that I've just gone through? And I think I wanted to share this for this group because one of the blessings is to know that I have made a difference in certain people's lives and I didn't know it. And so take the time to let people know if they make a difference in your life, because you just never know when that's going to be one of the biggest gifts you could give somebody. Mm. So Thank I, you, again, just really, really appreciate that you give us this forum and this platform to share those kinds of wins with everybody. Thank you, Julie. That was, uh, we resonated with that. Thank you. So wonderful. Anybody Thank you. Verbalizing uh -huh. aha. Robert, I apologize again for the incident earlier. And I apologize to everyone. Okay. One day I'm gonna get rid of this hacker, I promise. I hope. Anyway, thank you all. Love you all. Uh thank you, Bonnie. Uh anybody anybody else want to say one more if I have one more thought, one more comment. That's it. I had a thought. And that was when you said that Apple cut cut out all their products except for. And then I just thought immediately, okay, how can I just cut out everything except a few things for this at least 90 days, but even forever? Yeah, because exactly. Exactly, Pam. <laughs> just for 90 days. You can say no to lots of things for 90 days. And but I'm gonna do that for on the 91st day. You get you get to get all that other crap back. <laughs> <laughs> Why not cut it out forever? <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, everyone. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous, Bob.